What's up, sixth grade? Together again. Thank you for sending me your Pikachu drawings. That's some very nice Pikachu drawings. Like, really, really good. They were excellent. The proportions were amazing. Really, really colorful. Um, excellent. I love them. So today, we're going to be doing our friend Stewie Griffin from Family Guy. Uh, he's not a very happy little man. That's okay. Um, I'm going to erase this, and we're going to do this together. Make sure that you turn your paper vertical. Pencil and eraser. And I'll erase this guy, and we'll get cooking. Let's get cooking. I'm not a huge Family Guy watcher. I don't even know if I've watched it one a couple times in my life, but I hear it's very funny. Okay. So. Hope you guys are staying safe and enjoying this weather that's starting to get a little bit nicer. And hopefully you're getting out a little bit. Okay. Now, Stewie's got a gigantic size head, as you know. And his head and body are about the same size as far as height-wise. So I'm going to start exactly in the middle of this piece of paper. Left to right, let's start right here. Up and down, right in the middle. Right in the middle. So what I'm going to do, right there. I know you guys, I know what you're going to do. You're going to take your pencil, you're going to go whoop, and you're going to make a big giant oval for his head. His head's not an oval. His head is a big fat football. Really wide in the middle. Almost pointy on the ends, except there's ears over there. So we're going to do it in two separate shapes. A big smile and then a big frown. Okay, so that's where I'm going to go to. So I'm going to come almost to the side of my paper. Here we go. Make a nice big smile. That's almost to the sides. The ears aren't very big. So you can go as, as far as you want. Now over on this side, I'm going to do a little ear, like a little half circle, like, like a, a capital letter C. And there's just a slight little line, little detail inside that ear. The ear on the other side is a little bit different. It's a little bigger because he's turned a little bit. The ear goes inside the head. So here, you can see that it's going inside where this one is not. And it's slightly bigger. It also has more detail than the other one. There's a curved line near the top. And then there's a little curved line that's coming out of that shape right there. It's kind of like a fancy looking letter T or something. And now I'm simply going to connect the top of that ear with, once again, you can see that the, the ear goes in the head where this one doesn't. Now, the trick is you want to try to get a, you know, you don't want it to be flat. You don't want it to be completely round. What you want, if we had an imaginary line, which is we'd be right about there, we want it to be about, we want it to be symmetrical. So that's about where my line needs to go to. So I'm going to go up. Now, I would recommend... You got a little bit pointed on this head, but that's okay. Um, I know I'm doing it with one big fell swoop of a line, but it's only because it's a dry erase marker. You might want to lightly sketch, and some of you already do that anyway. You want to lightly sketch it, and then you can go back. Yeah. That's kind of the shape you're looking for. Small on the ends. Nice and wide in the middle, but it is certainly by no means a circle. Now, his eyes are perfectly round. If you want to use a, a compass or a tracer or any little 
circle template or anything that's you know laying around that's round that um, is the right size, go for it. You do not have to prehand these like I have to do. So there's an eye on this side of the head. There's, per, there's a lot of space between his eyes. So you want to circle on that side. And that's a terrible circle. That's a little better. You got quite a bit of space on each side, on, um, in the middle, I should say. Now he's he's kind of got his eyelids down. He's like really annoyed. So the way they do that in this cartoon is they do a straight line through there, leave a little bit of space, another straight line. Straight line. So both his top and bottom eyelids are like squinting. And our pupil is going to touch the top line. If you are just doing a pencil drawing, you can color those in. If you plan on coloring this in, then don't color it in with the pencil. Because you're going to have to put black over top of that later if you're going to color it in. Eyebrows are slanted in. In cartoon world, that means angry. That one's a little bit long, I think. There we go. Nose is quite simple. It's kind of in the middle, a little bit to the left, and it's just two sides of a triangle. Or actually, it's like a it's a capital letter L that's just tipped a little bit. His mouth is immediately under the nose. That's usually where the mouth is. And it's going to slant out like so, and then across, going slightly lower on the right. Small detail, but it, it completes the face. So it's kind of like a check mark. And then that bottom lip is simply a single line that goes in a little bit and then just straight down. That's all it is. One single line. Now his hair, he's kind of got like Homer Simpson hair, except he's got more of them. And the way these hairs work is they start on the head. They go up off the head and then inside, right? So start on, up, and inside. Start on the line, up above it, and then inside. And you're just going to go around until you run it over. So they start on the head, they go up in the air, and then right down. And now his body, by far the trickiest part of the drawing. The head's very simple, actually. Very, very simple drawing. But we're doing the whole body, which usually we don't. Usually with the drawings, we're doing heads and shoulders and things like that. But we're going to do Stewie's whole body, because it's not very big. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make, he's got little overalls on. So right under the mouth. Pretty much right from the left side of the mouth to the right side of the mouth are where his overalls are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw two little curved lines for his overalls. And then I'm going to hop over to the other side of the mouth and I'm do the same thing. And then right at the bottom of those are going to be the little buttons. You can actually do the buttons first and then do the lines if you find that easier. Once again, if you have a circle tracer or something, or something that's the right size for the buttons and you want to trace them, go for it. Now connecting the overalls, or the straps, is the middle of the overall. It's a slightly curved line, anywhere from the middle of the circles to the top of the circles. And now I'm going to hop over a little bit. I would say somewhere around the middle of the eye. 
and that's where your shoulder is going to start right there. You want to leave yourself a little bit of room between the strap and the shoulder right there. And this shoulder is simply going to curve out a little bit and then straight down. His sleeve is, it's hard to really tell you exactly where it is, but it's below the buttons. I would say it's probably an even amount of space from the face to the button as the button to the sleeve. That's about, he has a little kid's body, right? He's got this, so we're not trying to make like an adult body. It's, it's a child, child's body. And now I'm going to do the other side of the sleeve, which is much closer to the button. And then from the button, the overalls slant down, if you're familiar with the overalls at all. And then it touches the sleeve, and that's where that line stops. The hand is very, very simple. Or do the heel of the hand, which is a slightly curved line. And then he has his finger that just goes down and comes up. And then a second one that overlaps a little bit. And a third one that comes up and goes right to the sleeve or a little bit inside the sleeve if you want the sleeve to be a little wider. That's fine too. Now I'm going to hop over to the other side. This line, there's a little bit of distance here. On this side, it's actually closer because just like his head is tipped, and we can see that here better than this one, his body is slightly tipped where we can see more of this shoulder than this one. It's a slight difference, but it's worth mentioning. So now what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna come out and down like I did on the other side. My sleeve, I think I need to go a little bit lower actually. I want this sleeve to be a little bit higher than that one. A little bit higher. Not too much. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to come up here. See this line right here? The inside of the sleeve? I'm going to come over here, and it's going to be about halfway between this line and the strap. I know there's not a lot of room on each side, but that's, that's what we're trying to do. That's what we're supposed to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down. I'm going to curve in a little bit, just a little bit. And then I'm going to go straight down. So I kind of slightly curve this line in and then straight down, which is actually your leg. So right here where the arm ends, we're simply going to do a sleeve that goes and touches the body. And then here, it's just the hand's very simple. It just curves in, and then there's a little thumb that curls right there. It's kind of like he's wearing a mitten, but we just can't see the hand too much. Now, we made this line over here and this button for the overalls. We're going to do the same thing over here, where it just curves down and touches the sleeve. Very small little line there, but we need it there. Now, this is my leg right here coming straight. Actually, that doesn't go straight down, does it? Okay, that line is the bottom of my leg. So I'm going to come over and make the other side here. Here you can see a little bit of his Budinsky. So we're going to make a little bump in. And then this is going to go straight down. And both of these lines should be about the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make this leg the pants and then it's going to come up in the middle right there and then there's a slight little line that curves up to the top of the pants and then here you're going to do another line. Notice there's a slight curve just so you can see the difference between each leg and it does look like one big leg. 
And then I'm going to do this shoe first because I can see more of it. So I'm just going to curve around like that. And then this one goes straight down because that's the back of the shoe. The front of the shoe is always going to be more curved than the back. And we're going to connect those like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Shoe goes out. And then it's going to finish behind this one. Can't see the back of that shoe. Ta-da! Stewie Griffin. I've never drawn him before. It's kind of fun. Something new. And if you're going to color in Stewie, obviously you can Google him. But just in case you can't, his head is kind of a peachy skin tone. The whites of his eyes are white. Hands, skin tone. Um, shirt, yellow. Overalls, nice bright red. The buttons look like they're a little bit lighter yellow, I think. And then the shoes are kind of like a light blue. And as always, when you're done, you get them all completed. I definitely want to see them. So you can either email me, school email at mdelpazo at C um, germantown, csd.org. Or you can send it to me in your teams, which some of you have been doing. There is a team there for sixth grade art. Okay? So stay safe. Have some fun. And uh, we'll see you next time. See you later, guys. I miss you.